Okay, here we go with my first video in my Nano Lagoon series. Um, I'm going to start basically where I started, and that was making rock, because I didn't want to spend five bucks a live rock, a pound for rock, so, you know, like many people on the internet, make their own rock. But I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to try and get that purple coralline color, and I read on a really long form, form somewhere that, uh, you can get it by using some poly blend. Uh, no one's actually ever done this, so here I, I've done it, and it actually turned out quite well. I'll show you the results in a, in a couple minutes. But what I used was this two kinds of poly uh, poly blend. One is red clay, quarry red clay. The other is Captain's Blue. Okay, so you got those two. That's your that's your cement mix pretty much. You're not going to use any more cement. Although I found out later that maybe a little bit of cement would have helped. Um, then you got some sand. I used some aragonite sand because I wanted to you know get that pH and you know, that calcium and all that goodness. And some salt. This is a recipe I found on some website. Now the salt you're looking for has to say 99 point whatever evaporated salt. You want to make sure that's that it reads that because otherwise it'll have all sorts of bad stuff in it. Um, this salt is full of all sorts of different pieces. Now they're pretty big so what I did is I took a whole bunch of it put it in a plastic bag and mashed it with a hammer to get some some smaller sizes uh, and that worked out pretty well. So the mix I used, if I remember correctly, it was a, over a month ago now, the rocks are all cured, um, was one part red, one part blue, three parts sand, two parts salt. Uh, you can play with it a bit, add some more sand, add some more poly blend. It's a pretty forgiving recipe. You can mess with it. Um, I might have done a little bit of extra sand and a little bit of extra poly blend in each of my mixes just because I like playing with cement and used to work with it and kind of know by touch what a good mix is. Uh, once you got that, you mix it up in, in your container, whatever you want to use. You got your mud. And what I did is I came over to a bin like this and I laid a whole bunch of salt on the bottom and I put my cement on the salt. And there it cured for, I let it sit there for a day and a half and it hardened take it off, wipe off all the salt that was on the bottom and then I stuck it in another one of these and it was full with water and I let it sit there for a couple of weeks, change the water, sit there for a couple of weeks, change the water and basically four or five weeks later I had a stable pH. Um, you're looking for the water to have the same pH as when you put it in so my tap water is a pH of seven, put the rocks in test it three days later. If it says seven, great. If not, keep on waiting. And then just wait until eventually you get a stable pH from the water. All this stuff I got at Home Depot except for the sand I got from my local fish store and it was pretty expensive and I've seen people use play sand so maybe next time I'll, I'll go with that and give it a try as long as it doesn't cause too much problems in my tank. It's a cheaper alternative. And I'll go upstairs and show you the rest. And on my way up, here's some of my homemade wine, some DIY wine. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to do if you enjoy wine. It's a great hobby, great experience. It's just, again, like the Nano Lagoon, you have to have patience until it's really good. Uh, usually about six months to a year is a good waiting time for some DIY wine. I'm looking forward to having some of this. That looks particularly good. And if you don't drink it all, you can always use it for cooking. And that there is my other pet, my dog. He's a, uh, he's kind of a lazy. Oh, oh, looks like the beast has awoken. That is Dell. Dell, smile through the camera. Yawn. Good enough. He's a, uh, he's a roxer, half Rottweiler, half Boxer. Great dog. If you ever have a chance to get a roxer, I highly suggest the breed. And here it is. This is my Nano Lagoon. Um, I made this stand. It's not finished yet. I haven't done all the wiring and whatnot. And I'll kind of show all that in a different update later on. 
But this stand costs about 20 bucks. It's made out of 2x4 studs and some remnant plywood they had sitting at the back of Home Depot. The guy gave me pretty cheap. And some black paint, some old hinges I found in the garage, and a couple old kitchen handles. It's a, uh, it's all right. It's not that that pretty, but it's functional, right? That's what DIY is about, being functional. Later on, when I have money, I'll I'll get a good one. So the Nano Lagoon, as you'll see, this you can get all the details from IPSF.com. His videos. Um, this is what I did. I added a little something. If you see, I've got a. A PVC overflow right here. It's uh, sucking water down. And up here, I have an inlet coming from the base. This is day one. Well, it's been about 24 hours. It was pretty murky yesterday, not really worth videotaping. If you see in here, I've got a whole bunch of my rock made and I've got three pieces of live rock and if you can tell there's really no difference between the coralline covered live rock I bought and the rock I made the color is you know pretty much identical I'm pretty impressed I didn't expect it to be so spot on I, I thought it was going to be different but um, the only piece that looks different is this one as far as I can tell those two up there are actually coralline and crested rocks and they look like the rest of them. Down below I have the beginnings of my sump. So here we go we've got some more of my made rock and there's another piece of live rock right there. Got my heater, I've got my inlet and I've got my pump going back up. Eventually I'm going to get some macroalgae, some Cheeto, but you know, sumps are pretty cheap. This 10 gallon was only 15 bucks. It was only 5 bucks for the acrylic to make the divider. 4 bucks for the uh, silicone. So, you know, 30 bucks for a sump. And got the power head to send the water back up. It was only 15 bucks online. Um, eventually, I have this little nano protein skimmer. Once I get a bunch of bio load in there, I'll hook that up and see if it helps out got some timers I'm gonna stick the lights on the, uh, the refugium lights will eventually be on 12 hours on 12 hours off on a on a different schedule than the tank lights just to keep the pH stable um, I've picked up a master kit which is actually pretty good because I found that the calcium was quite low after I mixed up the instant ocean and if I want the coralline to spread quickly and if I want the corals to grow well uh, calcium needs to be at you know some tested levels that people have found out that are good. Uh, calcium they say should be around 400 part uh, ppm and mine just after making instant ocean was only at I think it was 280 so yeah could could use more and I added some more with a supplement and I'll test it tomorrow to see if that did the trick and test it every day it's kind of fun testing the water. But this is it. This is my tank. Those are my rocks. They've got a bit of sand on them once I dust those off. It'll, the purple will really come out. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this movie. Leave questions, comments, you know, suggestions. The only thing I'm going to change about this right away is the PVC overflow. That's too small. That's half inch PVC. It just doesn't give me the flow I want. Uh, my pump's only working half as hard as it could be. So I'm going to probably make a bigger PVC overflow to 3 8 or 3 fifths or something. Anyway, enjoy. See you around. One last thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time on YouTube, but I am doing my basement, and right there will be my future tank, my big boy. Um, I don't know how many gallons I'll get in there, but I'm not looking for something too massive. We'll see. It'll be fine.